Hello, my name is Jonathan Trent and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Department of Sarcoma Medical Oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. I'd like to welcome you to Headline News in Gastrointestinal Stromal Tumor, or GIST. Today I'm going to cover some interesting data and abstracts that I found pertinent that were just presented at ASCO in Chicago, which potentially may have some impact on how we approach treatment planning for our patients, both today and in the future. For review purposes, I thought it would be appropriate to discuss multiple areas that affect the continuum of care of our patients and touch on areas such as advanced metastatic disease, practice patterns, adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapies, GIST characterization, and my thoughts on the future of GIST. There was so much thought-provoking data presented on GIST this year that it fully completed about one-third of all of the sarcoma sessions. I would also encourage you to look through all of the abstracts presented in Chicago and review some of the actual investigator video and audio interviews contained within the GIST section on OncuView.tv. Looking at the presentation, there were many interesting questions and answers that came from the French sarcoma group. There are some questions about the duration of imatinib therapy after five years and what impact that will have on progression-free survival. Ray Cocard and colleagues had previously performed the prospective randomized study that showed imatinib interruption increased the risk of disease progression after one year and three years in non-progressing patients. This year, they presented the data on imatinib discontinuation after five years of therapy. The study began with 129 patients, 58 completed one year, 50 completed three years, and now 24 have completed five years of therapy. The results, they found that 54% of the patients relapsed when treatment was stopped. There was no progression of disease observed in patients that were on continuous therapy for five years. And rechallenge restored tumor control in all progressing patients. And what we see based on that data is that the median follow-up post-randomization in the five-year group was 12.6 months and the median progression-free survival was significantly longer in the continuation arm compared to the discontinuation arm with a p-value of 0.0317. Imatinib stopped at five years resulted in a higher rate of progression than imatinib maintenance in patients with advanced GIST in response or stabilized with imatinib. Imatinib must be given continuously until progression of disease or intolerance in the population of non-progressing advanced or metastatic GIST. Imatinib discontinuation puts the patient at significant risk for progression of disease. Now let's look at another question from the study. Does time to progression of disease after imatinib discontinuation affect retreatment outcome? Dr. Lassane and colleagues studied the impact of the imatinib-free interval and pattern of GIST mutations on subsequent outcome of patients. The primary objective of this study was to follow patients in the BR14 study who had interrupted imatinib therapy after one or three years and were rechallenged with imatinib upon progression. The study included 57 patients, 32 of whom had completed one year with a median follow-up of 66 months, 25 of whom completed three years with a median follow-up of 35 months. And what they found was that imatinib restarted after progression at 400 milligrams per day occurred in 47 patients, and it was restarted at 300 milligrams per day in one patient. A second progression occurred in 23 of these patients after imatinib rechallenge. In conclusion, imatinib interruption in responding patients with advanced GIST after one year or three years of treatment resulted in a high risk of rapid progression and a reduced progression-free survival. 
The kinetics of progression after a matinib interruption seems to influence the time to secondary resistance to a matinib. Similarly, mutational status of GIST seems to influence the time to secondary resistance to a matinib. These results observed in patients with advanced GIST should be considered also for the use of a matinib in the adjuvant setting. Now there's additional data from the study evaluating the site of primary kit exon 11 mutation and its prediction of progression-free survival. Blay and colleagues investigated the topography of kit exon 11 mutation and found that it correlated with primary disease location and conveyed predictive value for progression-free survival in patients with advanced GIST. This analysis takes into account the 101 patients with mutation of kit exon 11 that have not been randomized in the stop arm and for which the precise topography or genotype was available. The primary endpoint of this study was progression-free survival. Secondary endpoints included overall survival, response to a matinib restart in the stop arm, and time to secondary resistance in both arms. Exploratory endpoints of this study included descriptive analysis of the topography or kit genotype in exon 11 patients and correlation with clinical presentation and correlation with response and survival with these exploratory endpoints. In conclusion, this prospectively collected series of patients with GIST who had kit exon 11 mutation all treated with imatinib 400 milligrams per day, excluded patients on the interruption arm. Four subgroups of kit exon 11 mutation could be distinguished. These subgroups were associated with specific clinical presentations and characteristics. Patients with group two who had mutations in kit exon 11 greater than codon 560 had a significantly worse progression-free survival in both univariate and multivariate analyses. This study indicated additional levels of molecular heterogeneity in GIST in terms of response to treatment and clinical outcome. These results deserve confirmation in an independent data set and will hopefully lead to prospective stratification of patients in clinical trials based on their kit exon 11 mutation. Another question that the study and others have brought to light, gist of the rectum and pararectal space are rare entities with limited clinical pathologic series. Defaud and colleagues looked at a retrospective analysis of rectal gist patients over the past nine years in FSG centers. 81 patients were retrospectively assessed. 12 patients had preoperative imatinib with a median duration of seven months ranging from two to 10 months. Eight of these patients had a partial response. There were three minor responses and one patient with stable disease. Importantly, sphincter conservation was attained in eight patients. They also reported that preoperative imatinib resulted in substantial tumor shrinkage in most patients and facilitated function of sphincter preserving surgery. Since rectal gists have a high risk for relapse, postoperative imatinib should be considered for these patients. Let's take a look at a newer agent. Nilotinib is a selective tyrosine kinase inhibitor, or TKI, targeting KIT, the platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha, or PDGFRA, and BCR ABLE with activity against imatinib-sensitive and resistant GIST cells. Casali and colleagues have an ongoing phase two multicenter single-arm trial that is evaluating the efficacy of nilotinib in newly diagnosed patients with unresectable or metastatic GIST or with recurrent GIST post-adjuvant treatment. Nilotinib is given until progression of disease, unacceptable toxicity, or patient discontinuation for any reason. The primary endpoint is progression-free survival at six months. In this early analysis of this pilot study, nilotinib displayed substantial clinical benefit 
and a favorable safety profile in the first-line treatment of patients with metastatic or unresectable GIST. 85.7% of the patients were progression-free at six months. There were six patients who had a partial response, six with a stable disease, and two patients for, with, who had progression of disease. 57.9% of patients experienced adverse events. Most were grade one or two of any source. Ongoing observation was the basis for the phase three trial of nilotinib with imatinib as first line therapy in advanced GIST. Accruing to trials like this when patients are previously seen in the community prior to our evaluation at a center of excellence potentially make this a challenge for accrual. So it is recommended that patients with newly diagnosed GIST be referred to sarcoma centers to participate in clinical trials with new agents such as this one. This has been reported by Dr. Casali as well. Nilotinib has also been evaluated in patients with advanced gastrointestinal stromal tumor in third-line therapy. This is the first results of the ENES-G3 clinical trial. ENES-G3 is a phase three randomized open-label multicenter trial that has been conducted to test nilotinib versus control. Control being defined as best supportive care, or BSC, with physician choice to continue or stop imatinib or sunitinib in patients with advanced or metastatic GIST who had failed both imatinib mesylate and sunitinib. This phase three study with 248 patients randomized in a two to one fashion to nilotinib BID at the 400 milligram dose or to the control arm. There were no significant differences observed in progression-free survival between the nilotinib and the control arms by central radiographic review, 109 versus 111 days. However, local review found longer progression-free survival in the nilotinib and in the control arm, 119 versus 70 days, with a statistically significant p-value of 0.0007. Median overall survival did not differ significantly between the nilotinib and the control arms, although there was a trend towards superiority for nilotinib. Subanalysis of only those patients who had documented progression on one prior imatinib and one prior sunitinib treatment before enrolling in the study were found to have significantly longer overall survival in the nilotinib arm versus the control arm. 405 days versus 280 days. However, outcomes were difficult to interpret due to the mixed patient population. These patients had multiple lines of previous therapy, there was a lack of documentation of failure to prior therapy, and investigator choice to include TKI continuation in the best supportive care control arm varied. Given the almost two-month improvement in median overall survival in the intent to treat population, and four-month improvement in the true third-line patients, further study of nilotinib in the well-defined GIST populations is warranted. <music>